atomic orbital is a region around the nucleus of an atom where there is a high probability of finding an electron. If we use a tiny planet to represent the nucleus, then you can think of an atomic orbital as a huge atmosphere surrounding that tiny planet. In the previous lectures, we saw that the azimuthal quantum number L is dependent on the principal quantum number N such that L can be a whole number ranging from 0 up to n minus 1. These values for L tells us the shape or type of subshells in a particular shell. A value of L equals 0 corresponds to an s orbital. A value of L equals 1 corresponds to a p orbital and when L equals 2 we have a d subshell. The labels S, P and D come from the words sharp, principal and diffuse. We have also seen that the magnetic quantum number is also dependent on L. For instance, when L equals zero, the magnetic quantum number takes a single value of zero. A single value for M tells us that we have one individual orbital in a specific subshell. If we have three values for M, it means that there are three individual orbitals. And of course, if we have five values for M, it means we have five individual orbitals. So let us now take a closer look at these individual orbitals. We will be mainly focusing on their shapes and orientation. An S orbital has the shape of a three-dimensional sphere. Its orientation is usually described with respect to an imaginary three-dimensional axis as shown on the screen. So if we have the X and Z axis on the same plane as a computer screen, the Y axis is therefore coming out of the screen. The orientation of the S orbital about these axes is such that the center of the sphere is at the point at which the x, y, and z axis meet. Now remember, for the p subshell, we have three individual p orbitals. These three orbitals all have the same shape, so I'll just show one at the moment. The shape of each p orbital resembles that of a dumbbell, so the shape is commonly described as being dumbbell shape. Now remember, this is a three-dimensional shape. It can also be described as two teardrops, with their narrow ends facing each other. Each of these teardrop shaped parts is referred to as a lobe. The 
point at which they meet is a node. Now you may notice that the lobes are shaded differently. In the diagram here, one lobe is gray or shaded, while the other is white or unshaded. The difference in the shading simply means that they are in opposite phases with respect to each other. Now let us take a look at the orientation of the p orbitals with respect to the x, y, and z axes. Remember that there are three p orbitals. Their positions in relation to the axes are shown here. You may notice that with each of these, there is an axis that passes straight through the lobes. For instance, in the one on the left, the z-axis passes straight through both of the lobes. This p orbital is therefore labeled as the pz orbital. In the one in the middle, you will notice that the x-axis passes straight through both of the lobes. Therefore, this p orbital is labeled as the px orbital. And of course, for the one on the right, the y-axis passes straight through both of the lobes. This p orbital is therefore labeled as the py orbital. Now let us take a look at the d orbitals. We only encounter them in the n equals 3 energy level. This energy level can take on three values for L, where L equals 2, we have a D subshell with five values for M. And so, we have five individual D orbitals. Here we can see models of what these orbitals may look like. Here we are only considering the shape of the 5D orbitals and their orientation with respect to each other. We will look at the phases of the lobes in a little while. The white one on the left has a unique shape. It sort of resembles a P orbital with a ring around it. The other four D orbitals have the same shape. Despite having the same shape, their orientation, or the way in which they are positioned, makes each of them unique. Now we are currently viewing them as separate individual orbitals. This picture may help you to visualize how the five orbitals are arranged around the nucleus. It is important for you to be able to draw these orbitals. So from here on, I'll be using diagrams instead of the models. So let us take a look.